Hello, everyone. Uh, over the last few weeks, my inbox was uh, flooded with messages from our FabTrader community members. Uh, many of you saw my previous video on the Nifty Shop strategy, where I shared my live trades and returns. And uh, the, the feedback has been incredible, right? So a lot of you were excited, some of you were curious, and uh, quite a few asked me the same question, can this be backtested? So in, in today's video, uh, we're going to do exactly that. Uh, we're going to take the Nifty Shop strategy, put it through five years of data, test multiple variations of the rules, multiple combinations of the input consideration, measure its performance, not just on the returns, but also on the risk and consistency. And finally, I'll share with you the top ranked combinations that yielded the best returns over the past five years. So stick around till the end because I'm going to reveal the winner, the, the best combination that produced the, the best results and the returns for Nifty Shop strategy. Now, for those of you who might be new here and didn't watch the first video, please watch that video first to get a full understanding of what the strategy is all about. I've shared the link to this video in the description. However, let me give you a quick refresher on what this Nifty Shop strategy is all about. This strategy is built on the premise that the Nifty 50 stocks, the largest and the most stable companies in India, rarely stay down for too long, right? So we look for temporary pullbacks in these fundamentally strong stocks, enter when they are significantly below their 20-day moving average, and then patiently wait for them to revert back up, right, to a, to a set target before selling. There's no stop loss in this strategy. We average down when the price drops further and uh, sell when our average cost hits the, the target. So it's simple, mechanical and ideal for, you know, kind of beginners or busy professionals uh, who want steady compounding without the stress of, you know, watching the charts all day. Again, I strongly urge that you watch the other video first before you proceed with this one. Now, let's talk about the entry rules. Uh, you, you only need about 10 minutes a day uh, at around 3.20 p.m. As you know, 3.30 is when the market closes. So it's 10 minutes before the market close. Uh, step one, you just scan for uh, you know, the, the Nifty 50 universe of stocks and find five stocks that are trading the farthest below their 20-day moving average. That's step number one. Step number two is from those five, pick one stock that you already don't have, right, that you already don't hold and then buy it. If all the five stocks, uh, you know, that, that was chosen for that particular day are already part of your portfolio, then you look for averaging down opportunity. In this strategy, you average down only when a stock from your holding has fallen more than 3% from your last buy price and once you do that you buy only one stock per day that has fallen the most and now for the exit rules at the end of the day before you actually begin the buy leg of the strategy you do the following steps to sell the stocks that are eligible right so at 3 20 pm every day you check your portfolio and see if any stock that is trading more than five percent above your average buy price right the five percent is the target and uh, uh, that we've kept for this particular strategy and if you do have any stock which satisfies that condition you just sell one stock per day so this is the original strategy. However, based on our backtest results, we're going to change a few things uh, to take it from, from good to awesome levels, right? So stay with me on that. This is an interesting part. Uh, we've come to the position sizing approach here. The original strategy, if you remember, recommended a few approaches to position sizing. However, I took a fresh look at it and I've considered the following three approaches for my backtesting. Number one is these static position sizing. So in this, we assume a set amount for each trade and that amount won't change. For example, 10,000 rupees for each trade when you buy a stock for the first time. And then the same 10,000 rupees when you are averaging down. Right? Here, I've also considered two other variations within it, which is one is pyramiding, where if you allocate 10,000 when you buy a stock for the first time, then you allocate a, a smaller amount, say 5,000 for averaging. The reverse pyramid is also possible, where you use 10,000 for the first buy and then you allocate 15,000 for averaging. Right? The advantage with this one is that since you're since you're basically averaging with a higher amount, the position can come up to target much faster. So for the backtesting, we will use all these variations and then you'll see all that detail shortly. The second approach is the dynamic approach where we go for a percentage of the free cash that is available. For example, let's say you start with four lakhs and you already have used three lakhs and have only one lakh left within your portfolio, right? Then your position size would be like 5% of that one lakh, which is 5,000 per trade. Here as well, we will change the percentage point, increase it, decrease it, you know, uh, and then test various different combinations within our backtesting. The third approach is the divisor approach, wherein you divide the total portfolio value by a number called the divisor. For example, let's say 40 is your divisor and your portfolio value is say 4 lakhs. So 4 lakhs divided by 40 and that will be 10,000 per trade will be your position size. Here as well, we can change the divisor number up and down to see which divisor value gives us the best results. So given all this background, we have multiple inputs into the strategy that needs to change and we need to test all possible combinations to see which one basically comes up at the top. Right? So to recap, what are the variables within the strategy? There are four main variables or four levers that we are going to be leveraging. Number one, the, the position size of the first buy. The second is the position size of the averaging. Right? The thirdly, the target percentage, 
while the original strategy told us to keep a 5% target, we are going to change this number as well. And lastly, the fall percentage of averaging down. The original strategy told us that we only consider for averaging down if the stock in our holding has already fallen down by 3%. So what if we vary this number 3% to say 4, 5, 6% and how would that impact the overall performance of the strategy? And that's what we're going to be also doing as part of our backtesting. So as you can see, there are many permutations and combinations uh, that would basically run into thousands of scenarios and it is humanly not possible to test every one of those. However, I've considered around 40 such scenarios for my testing and I've backtested each one of those. This is all okay, but we have a new challenge, right? We are testing so many variations. How do we decide which one is better? And that's where I use a, my simple framework that I learned from a friend of mine uh, who, who runs a PMS, right? While there are hundreds of strategy performance matrices, it is impossible to compare all those numbers, right? So I personally broadly look at three aspects. Number one is the returns, risk, and probability, where all these three kind of come together. Uh, that's the sweet spot in the middle that we are basically going to look for and measure. Right? So for returns, we will be considering the, the CAGR. And for risk, we will basically be looking at max drawdown, sharp ratio, and karma. And lastly, the probability and consistency. Uh, this includes the win ratio and the number of trades. right? Because a strategy that makes money on 80% of the trades gives you a far more psychological comfort than the one that's just a coin toss. More on this when we look at the practice results. So this is the Python implementation of the backtesting module. And uh, this is a script that I basically used to do all the backtesting. If you want to access this code, uh, the code is available within our community store. And I'll provide the link in the description. So you could take a look. So the implementation itself is pretty straightforward. We have all the Nifty 50 instruments uh, you know, as on date today. And then we are considering five years for our testing period, starting from 2020, the, the July, and then until end of June this year. Right, So a total of about five years. And then if you really look at the, the inputs that we're providing, like I said, the position sizing approach, we're going to have, we have three different approaches, the static, dynamic, and the divisor. So depending upon what pro, what you provide here, the, the backtester would basically run the backtest on that particular position sizing approach. For the static mode, we are going to be providing the, the fresh static amount, which is when you buy the stock for the, for the first time, which is a fresh buy, right? And this is the amount that static amount it's going to use. And then when you're averaging down, you could change the, the amount, right? It can either be same or different, right? The, it, it is all parameterized here. And when you're using dynamic mode, which is basically a percentage of the free cash available, you can again, basically for a fresh purchase, you can say what percentage, in this case, it is going to be 4%. It's just a sample. You can change it to anything you want. And then similarly for averaging, what is the cash percentage that you want to use? Right? And these two basically apply for the, the dynamic mode. And finally, for the divisor mode, again, the same concept, which is when you're buying it for the first time, what is the divisor that you want to use, right? Which is, it will basically consider the total value of your portfolio at that point in time and divide by 50 then that amount is going to be your position size. Right? That's what the divisor basically means here. We're taking the initial capital as four lakhs here. The target percentage again is parameterized. You can be, we're going to be changing this number and then testing that combination. And similarly, the averaging down trigger percent, right? Like the, the default is 3%, but we are again going to change this and see how that affects our performance. In case you're running the script, the only thing, only change that you have to make on your side is this particular function at the top, which is the get historical data. I am currently using zero though to get historical data, but depending upon your broker, uh, you, you will have to change this particular function to include your code here so that you, you get the historic data for all the Nifty 50 stocks. So that's the only change that you will have to do from your perspective if you're looking to run the script on your own. All right, I'm sure you're saying enough of the suspense. Uh, you know, tell us the, the performance, right? I mean, what the, the results of the backtesting is, right? So this is the, the final, you know, the consolidated backtest results. So in total, uh, I've considered close to about 34 uh, specific scenarios. And then of, of which the, the first, the, the lighter gray that you see uh, here, right? The, the, the first part, that those are all the, the, uh, the scenarios that are related to the static position sizing approach. And then the slightly darker next set of, uh, you know, uh, scenarios are related to the dynamic position sizing approach. And then finally, we have the, the divisor approach, right? So in total, there are 34 scenarios that uh, I've kind of tested. Uh, to give you an example of how this, uh, this what, what are the things that I've considered, for example, let's look at this first one, right? This is a static approach where we have a set amount for the, the, the first buy, right? This is a position size for the first buy, which is 10,000. And then per averaging, we're considering 5,000, which is half of this, right? This is the pyramiding that I talked about. The percentage for averaging, right? This is the, you know, the 3% if it has fallen below the, the, the last buy price, right? That is what this AVG 3% is. And the target is 5%. So we basically looked at those four important uh, you know triggers and then this is the values that we've considered and that basically becomes one test case here right and when we do it when we run the the script we basically get uh, you know we capture these matrices at the top right the, it's the same way i had explained for returns we are calculating CAGR. for risk we are com considering the the max drawdown sharp ratio and also the comma ratio right 
and for probability you're considering win rate as well as the number of trades. So what the sheet does is basically it applies a weightage for each of those factors and then it individually assigns a rank for each of those factors here. All six factors are basically having a rank here from you know, starting from one and then it finally comes up with the weighted score depending on the weights that we have assigned. Right? So this is the final weighted score and then based on the final weighted score we, we basically apply the, the final performance ranking right in the last. Right? So a standard template that I usually use to you know to rank any strategies if I want to compare multiple strategies together or I want to compare multiple iterations of a single strategy this is the approach and a framework that I currently use. So let's take a look at one example from the dynamic as well. So here what is happening is the, we are considering 5% of the free cash flow available as the you know the amount for buying the first time and then for averaging we are considering 5% right. For averaging down we basically want 2% you know the, the stock should have fallen 2% below the, the last buy price and this is what the averaging down percentage is and the target is 5% right. So, so that's an example of a dynamic. So here you can see all the various combinations that we have used, right? Right. In this case, for example, uh, we, we are using the same five and a five. Averaging down also is two percent, but target we are considering six percent. Here it's exactly the same, but the target we are considering eight and ten percent here. Right? And here, if you see, we are slightly changing the numbers, right? For uh, for, for the first buy, we are considering six percent. For the averaging, we are considering five percent. For averaging down, we are considering five percent here, and the target also five percent. So, so these are the various combinations that I basically felt was the was the right mix of combinations that we need to be testing. Right? And coming to divisor, the last uh, here to just to give you an example, we're using a ten divisor, which means that you know it takes the the entire size of the portfolio at the start. Maybe if you add four lakhs, you will divide four lakhs by ten. So forty thousand will become your position size for a single trade, right? Similarly, the you know when you're trying to go for averaging down, it will be the the same. It will apply the ten again, right? The ten divisor. The averaging down percentage here is going to be three percent, and target is five percent, right? Similarly, you will see here I've constantly changed the numbers. I've tried with ten divisor, twenty, thirty, forty. I've gone up to fifty divisors, right? And then I've interchangeably, you know, kind of changed the target percentages also here from five to eight percent. Now I've tried various. Of course, I did not tabulate everything here. I did a lot of other tests as well, close to about hundred plus tests that I did. But I, I found the ones that are basically very close to to what we're looking for here, and tabulated them as well as a sample here. So there are totally thirty four such test cases here. In addition to the, the six factors that I talked about, I've also cap captured a few other things that maybe you might be interested in. One is your average holding period, because this is one of the questions I get asked a lot of times, like as to how many days a position is open uh, before a target is met, right? So that number in days, in terms of days, right, I've also uh, maintained here. And then one to basically check if it beats Nifty, right? This particular test case or the scenario, does it beat Nifty or not, right? Um, what I found is on an average uh, for five years, uh, Nifty has given about 12.3% CAGR. And if the if the strategy basically gets more than that, it's, it's, it's a, it, it means that it beats, beats Nifty, otherwise it is not, right? And then finally, after brokerage, I've also captured the, the net PNL percentage that each of these scenarios basically produced. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, which is, uh, you know, which is the, the combination that basically gave us the, the best results, right? So in terms of a ranking, which is the rank number one, and that is this one, right? The divisor, which is the scenario number 30, where we are going for 30 divisor for both your first buy as well as for averaging. And then your average percentage, averaging down percentage remains at 3%, what the original strategy talked about. In terms of the target, rather than going for the standard 5% that the original strategy talked about, the 8% basically produced the, the maximum results. So in terms of the overall net PNL percentage, this is the second best, which is basically about 250% in the last five years, right? And then the average holding period was about 92 days, which basically means about three to four months. Sometimes it takes as long as uh, three to four months for a position to close. The max drawdown is zero, understandably, because we are not closing any positions uh, in a loss. Uh, the, the win rate is basically 90% of the times it's basically a win, which is also kind of expected. The sharp ratio is 5.7 and the total amount of trades in five years is 692, which is actually a sweet spot because for some of those uh, scenarios, we've gone up to almost 1,200 twice the size as this because the more number of trades you go, you the more brokerage you're going to also pay, right? But this 692 is at a sweet spot, right? So based on all that, the ranking you know came up uh, as number one. So to sum up again, the one that basically came up with the rank one is the, is the divisor approach where we're using 30 and 30 for averaging and the fresh buy. And for averaging down, we're using 3% and target is 8%. Let's take a quick look at the performance uh, on the dashboard itself. As I was explaining, this is scenario number 30, which came up with the rank, num rank number one. Uh, we have 692 trades and then the winning trades out of which is 624. You might ask like, you know, we're not closing anything in at loss. So why are we still having a lesser win rate here? It should have been 100%. The, the answer to that is basically because we are doing averaging, the the, the trades that we took the earlier on, right, might still be at a loss because of the averaging down, the buy price basically comes down. And then when we close the, the position, we would still at an overall, uh, you know, the stock level will still be at a, at a profit. But individually at the trade level, some of those might be negative. Right? So they, they make up those 10%. The actual investment is a good number to see. Uh, it's basically the actual out-of-pocket money that you have spent from your pocket. 
so this uh, sometimes you know the the money gets in, reinvested also so we are not taking that into account the actual money that went out of my pocket as investment is what is reflected here the overall cross pnl of what uh, 10.3 lakhs here and then uh, cross pnl of 260% after all brokerages 249% which is a good number and then the holding period is 92 days as we already saw slightly longer but kind of expected uh, you know given that you know the turnaround takes a bit of time the cagr is really really good about 19% for almost like no risk here right so so that's what makes this the strategy so beautiful if you take a look at the equity curve the one the one in white is, uh, is nifty the same amount at the same time was invested in nifty 50 and this is this is what you would have gotten but the brown part is the actual strategy equity curve which is which is really you know you can see the uptrend here it's quite smooth and then almost twice is what uh, an nifty 50 would have produced which is really really good the drawdown is very very minimal as i was talking about this primarily due to the averaging down but nothing major less than 0.02 percent there almost zero the monthly heat map here looking very healthy and you can take a look at it for each month across all those five years the numbers are there along with the, the end of your numbers reflected here underwater plot nothing to report here because the strategy does not lose money right it's the, the nifty has a slight underwater underwater here which basically means nifty lost a bit of your investment but not really the strategy right which is which is again a really a good positive in terms of the strategy versus benchmark hands down the strategy beats the benchmark which is nifty 50 you can clearly see 24 percent in nifty almost 50 percent by the strategy 4.9 here 17 percent here 19.5 29.6 8.8 .8, and 22.1 this is kind of expected because we are not considering all the trades that are still open right and, and only when they are closed their actual pnl gets uh, you know calculated so that's why no, the numbers you will see slightly different so that is kind of expected so i would usually ignore this and i'll probably pay more attention to these four years where it's been the numbers have been excellent so one of the other question that i wa was asked a lot of times is like you know how much money do i really need uh, initially uh, you know for the, for the things like for example if four lakhs is the the total investment required you know the question that i was asked is do i need to put all four lakhs in the dmat account and how long is going to sit that uh, you know that money is going to sit within the demand account, not doing anything, right? What, what does the utilization look like and all that? So this extra infographic that I added uh, basically to answer those questions, which is if you really see the, the first trade that we took was in July 2020, right? And uh, that is this point, right? And then the white band talks about the money from out of our hand, how much we've invested, right? And then the, the brown part is, of course, how the equity overall portfolio group, right? So you can clearly see from starting zero, our investment, the entire four lakhs went in by the time it was September. So it took about two months for that entire four lakhs to be invested fully and beyond that point that four lakhs is we've, it's, it is, we've stayed basically that money has stayed invested the entire period right that's that's basically gives you a clear understanding of how long it basically takes uh, for us to basically ramp up to that uh, funding level right and the other question that is asked is like do we have to keep all four lakhs in the account and the, the starting itself the answer is no it could be basically placed in, in either a liquid fund or a liquid bees or an arbitrage fund and the money can be slowly drip fed into the strategy right because the strategy itself takes only one trade per day so all it basically needs that, that 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000, whatever the position size is, that's the amount of money that it needs. So every day that that money could be drip fed from, you know, the liquid assets, right? So that way the money doesn't stay within the demand account, not doing anything. It stays productive. So hopefully that's that's very useful to know. That it, in this case, you know, it, it has taken about two months for that entire money to be fully invested. By the way, if you're wondering how you can run similar backtests on your own strategies, uh, even if you have zero coding experience, I've built a complete course that teaches you exactly how to do it using Python and AI. It's completely beginner friendly and will help you not just to test, but also optimize and visualize your strategies, just like the way I've done it here. Right. So please do check out this, this course uh, when you can. And as I had already mentioned, if you want to dig deeper into the nifty shop uh, backtesting results that I've just posted here, if you really want to you know, kind of access it and then do a bit more testing on your side, I put the backtesting, uh, you know, the Python script, the daily screener for the Nifty shop, all the trade books from my testing, you know, and then the full ranking sheet that you just saw. All of it is basically available on our Fab Trader community store, and uh, the link is in the description. I sincerely hope this deep dive gave you not just the results, but also the process that you can replicate on any strategy that you're interested in. So thanks again for watching. As always, trade smart, compound steadily, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. If you genuinely found this video useful, please consider subscribing and liking the video. And I will see you soon in another video. And until then, take care and happy trading.